this would be a very, very nice picture to, to just fix in your mind because it's an absolutely beautiful transition between the stomach on the right and the duodenum on the left. Notice in the stomach, we have an area which is predominantly, in fact, entirely uh, producing uh, mucus rather than stomach acid because you see the surface epithelium of the stomach and the uh, gastric pits down here. You don't see any uh, parietal cells at all. This is an area of the stomach that is producing only mucin. Notice that the uh, uh, smooth muscle wall is uh, relatively thick, but when it gets into the transition zone, it becomes very, very thick. This is the pyloric sphincter, predominantly circular muscle, but you can see as well towards the outside, as well as here, there is some longitudinal muscle as well. Also notice that the pink connective tissue of the submucosa can be very, very easily confused with the pink connective-like looking tissue of the muscularis. Only a trichrome stain can tell the difference. These are probably muscularis mucosa fibers here. Here's smooth muscle. Here is circular muscle. Here is longitudinal muscle. And here is a tremendous thickening of the circular muscle, which is the uh, pyloric sphincter. And now, look what's happened. We no longer have a submucosa, which contains only connective tissue. We are now starting to have a submucosa, which is just loaded with these mucous glands. These are the submucosal glands of the duodenum. These are also called Brunner's glands. So now in the duodenum, we are having a very, very clear, very, very papillary array of mucosa, which we didn't have in the stomach. We could see a lamina propria. We could see a little bit of uh, smooth muscle cells of the muscularis mucosae. And we could see just jam-packed throughout the submucosa, the submucosal mucus glands of Brunner. And then we could see, as in all GI organs, some circular muscle fibers, some longitudinal muscle fibers. And because this is now the bulb of the duodenum or first part, we may see a true serosa because it is intraperitoneal, and that's probably what this is here. So now let's go back in. We have the uh, serosa, we have longitudinal muscle, we have circular muscle, we have this entire loose connective tissue of the submucosa replaced by beautiful mucus secreting glands of Brunner. We have a muscularis mucosae. We have lamina propria. We have basal glands of the duodenum. We have more superficial papillary structures of the duodenum, which consist of chiefly uh, uh, absorptive cells, but every now and then, like here and here and here and here and a few in here, we could see really, really nice goblet cells as well. Notice that uh, in the lamina propria, you will have lymphatics like the lacteals we saw in the jejunum. You will have capillaries you will have uh, lymphocytes, and you will have macrophages. And really, and you'll have a lot of plasma cells too. But to be really, really honest, when you look at an area like this, you could spend all day trying to decide whether something is a lymphocyte or a plasma cell or a macrophage. So that's why I have not been too big on trying to differentiate them. Sometimes you could see them for sure. So this is the world's nicest duodenum. And this is one of the world's nicest stomachs along here. And it's the terminal portion of the stomach or the pylorus. And this is the world's nicest pyloric sphincter. And this is probably one of the few times in your life because you are now in the bulb of the duodenum, which is intraperitoneal, where you will actually see a duodenum that has a serosa rather than an adventitia. And you know what I'm gonna say now. Thank you very much.